Hi guys, welcome to Empower, and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. So in this video, I wanted to go over a question that I got from my Facebook page from Alexis Lemon, who asked if I could do a video on feeling inadequate during her training with her preceptor. I do have a lot of tips for that, so I'm really happy to do this video for you, Alexis, and for everyone else who is watching. I know when I was a new nurse, I really needed help in this area, and really there wasn't any help to be found. So I'm sure that there's a lot of other nurses out there who have the same question. So thank you for asking me. So I wrote down five steps on things you can do that would help you build up confidence. But first, you have to really understand and appreciate just how far you've come. I mean, just remember all of the people who didn't make it through anatomy, chemistry, nursing school. You've really come so far. So the feeling of inadequacy can kind of be diminished when you think about how far you've come in that way. Another thing that you can do is just realize that nursing school literally teaches you a few things. Number one, how not to seriously harm someone and number two, how not to kill someone. And that's literally it. Nursing school does not teach you how to be a nurse. In fact, when you do get out into nursing and trying to apply nursing world life to the real world life, it's really, really overwhelming because unfortunately there is a pretty big mismatch. So just understand that you're not trained to do that. I know you just went through two to four years of school to get where you are and you know you probably should feel like you're further along than you are, but if you're not, don't worry, that's perfectly fine. And if you have classmates that are further along than you, it's possible that they worked as like a nursing assistant or a, a lab phlebotomist. They spent some time in the hospital. So most likely that's the case. If not, you know, there may be a few like rare people who just get it, but I wasn't one of them and I don't think most people just get it pretty much nothing in the hospital is really common sense. You really have to know what you're doing. So you've already come a long way. Nursing school hasn't really taught you what you need to know. So don't worry, your feelings of inadequacy are okay. <laughs> so the first thing that I want you to do is whenever you have a preceptor, I really want you to try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I've been a nurse for eight years. I've precepted, I don't even know how many people. I started precepting a new graduate when I barely had six months of experience. So I've literally been precepting since then. And I know that I'm an agency nurse, but it seems like everywhere I go, people are like, oh, can this new graduate be with you today? Or this new graduate. And sometimes even as an agency nurse, I've literally trained new graduates from their start to finish. So I've been precepting the entire time. So there's one thing that I really want you to know is that precepting can be really, really challenging because not only do you have your whole load of patients to care for, but you also have somebody that you have to you know, talk and teach all day. So I first want you to give your preceptor the benefit of doubt. Maybe she's just having a bad day. Maybe she just finished training one whole new employee and now she has to start all over. So really just try to give them the benefit of doubt and don't judge anyone like, you know, right off the bat. The other thing you can do is if you're having a difficult time with your preceptor is ideally you walk in and your preceptor is happy to have you, they're teaching you everything just flows and it feels great that can happen and it does happen a lot of times if it doesn't happen though do this try to focus more on helping and building a relationship with your preceptor ask them you know where they've worked get them to talk about their kids get them to talk about what they like about their job so just try to develop their relationship and then through the relationship they'll hopefully want to nurture you into teaching you how to be a nurse so I find that that really helps the second tip that I would have is to try to find people that make you feel as awesome as you are. You really are an amazing person, you're an amazing nurse, you're an amazing human being. So when you communicate with other nurses and some nurses are supportive, then try to ask them questions as opposed to people who try to tend to make you feel bad when you ask them questions. I know it's common sense, but um, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. Be on the lookout for nice people, they do exist. The third tip that I have for you is when you're a new nurse, you kind of have like some kind of base on how to do things, but you've never really done it yourself potentially. And so it's natural to go up to somebody and ask, how do I do this? Now, when I used to go up to people and ask, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? I would get, you know, some people would just tell me how to do it. And then other people would kind of challenge my intelligence. Just be like, did you go to nursing school? Are you a nurse? Have you worked in the last year? <laughs> Guys, listen, I've heard it all. So now what I do is I'm still asking the same question, but I'm rephrasing it. I'm saying, listen, I haven't done this in a while, even though I might not have ever done it. And 
I know I need to do this, this, and this. Am I missing anything or what else do I need to do? And you might find it helpful. I mean, when I started out as a new nurse, there was not nearly as many online resources. There weren't any, I don't think. I think when I started nursing school, like Google was just coming out. So literally, like you guys are living at such an amazing time. So if you don't know how to do something, try to look it up in your hospital's resources or your facility's resources or find a video on it or do something. But don't go there with like absolutely no knowledge at all. Maybe try to sneak into the closet or sneak into the supply room, watch a video real quick, and then go ask the rephrase question. The fourth step is to be patient with yourself. You have literally come so far and I know that you are proud of yourself deep down. And the feeling of inadequacy is something that nobody can really give you. You're really doing it to yourself. What I like to do when I'm feeling inadequate, because we're all human, it happens to all of us, is I like to get a good audiobook. Listening to audiobooks is one of my favorite ways to make myself feel better because when I'm putting other people's amazing thoughts right here in my brain, it makes me kind of sort of think like them. I know I talk about it a lot, but one of my favorite authors is Joel Osteen, and he has so many affirmations of where he's saying, I am wonderful. I am successful, I am the best. Guys, doing things like that, putting words like that in your head, it has a huge effect on it every aspect of your life. So get some good books. You don't have to you know, get Joel Osteen if you like somebody else. If you like Brendan Bouchard, Brian Tracy, Gabrielle Bernstein. I mean, there's so many amazing authors. Just find somebody out there that resonates with you and keep it simple. So the fifth step that I have for you is to take any anger that you have and to turn it into something good. I know that I've said it before in other videos, but if you haven't heard, one of the main reasons why I started Empower In was because my very first clinical experience was terrible. It was so bad, I was ready to give up on nursing altogether. I felt inadequate, I felt lonely, I felt disrespected, I felt humiliated, I felt bullied, I felt all of the above. I decided though, I made a conscious decision to turn it into something positive. And I said, I'm gonna do my best to make sure people feel welcomed in this profession regardless of where they work or who they are around. So ask yourself, what can I do now to turn this negative into a positive? Is there a new nurse that started a month ago that I can hold their hand a little bit? Does the charge nurse look incredibly overwhelmed? Can I take maybe a little something off their plate? So look for opportunities to be a blessing. And then every time that feeling of anger comes up, the feelings of being a blessing will also come up as well. All right, Alexis and everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, please give the video a thumbs up and I cannot wait to see you next week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.